midst of all the crises we have going on these days, uh, the weather, the fires, political divisions and upheaval as we approach election day, despite all these things, I still have hope and faith that God is here and with us and inspires us. And why? Because I still see people getting together and helping one another, serving the community. I get cards and questions from people asking how I am doing. And I've loved having the opportunity here at church to be able to say hello to people or just to be that listener uh, to someone who needs it. Um, in these times, it's great that we can be a helper and a hero and be the church. Here's a perfect example of people stepping up and helping other people. We were doing picnics at the park over at Ann Morrison Park. We started with nothing. We needed uh, some money and Albertson stepped up and gave us $10,000 grant. Some people from uh, Emmanuel Church reached in their pockets and one of them gave us their entire stimulus check. We needed some jam and a lady up in Hayden, Hayden Idaho made 28 gallons of wild huckleberry jam and shipped them down free. Now that, I tell you, is really remarkable. And I tell you, that's the goodness of God that helped that. As summer comes to an end and the days are getting cooler, the nights longer, I'm reminded about how much I am attracted to the light or motivated by the lights. I like to get up early and be up with the sun to enjoy the longer days. And now as the days shorten, I am planning to do something different this year, to bring out my Christmas decorations a little bit earlier and to get my candles lit and my Christmas lights out and my decorations, just to help me remember that in the darkness there is light. As Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Okay, one of the things that I'm going to do this winter is to continue what I was doing in the summer, hopefully. And that is, uh, we had picnics at the park where we were serving others. And Jesus says that in times of difficulty, we should always help other people if we can. Well, this winter, if possible, we're going to go ahead and do another service where we'll have food pickup at Albertson's parking lot and service people that are food insecure. This is what I feel is going to keep me busy. If that doesn't work, I'll find something else whereby my mission will be to assist others. It's a difficult time with a pandemic and with the protests and with the floods and with the fires and with the smoke. And now we're going to go into winter besides. So it's going to be cold. My mission, my, my hope is that I can help other people and stay, I will stay busy doing that this whole winter season. Thank you, Matt and Bruce, for sharing your stories with us. And we look forward to more stories by other members of the community in the coming weeks. You know, we miss being together. And we look forward to the time when we can be together again, when there is the lowest level of risk and to keep us all safe. Until then, we have put out a survey to talk about some possibilities for ways we might gather in smaller groups. I hope you saw that in your email this week, and if you didn't, let us know. We really would like to hear feedback from all of the community about ways that we can nurture our spiritual faith together. And now, let us continue with our worship. One thing I ask of you, divine goodness. One thing I seek that I may dwell in your house all the days of my life to gaze on your beauty and to meditate in your temple. In the beginning, the Creator was beguiled by beauty and so set in motion a world of immense beauty and goodness. All beings are beautiful, full of the essence of sacred worth, sensed not by the eyes, but with the spirit. Awakening to beauty. Falling in love with the world. Divine beauty shimmers and shimmies through the universe. 
and in every barrio where someone is singing or weeping. Because of beauty, our spirits are enlivened. Are you ready for new life? Divine goodness, prepare my spirit to see and be beguiled by the beauty of life. Amen. We try to satisfy our thirst for meaningful life with so many distractions and addictions. Awakening to beauty is to find the well that never runs dry. For it is in beginning to truly see the world with our spirits that our soul's thirst is quenched. The resilience and beauty of the natural world is a sign of hope, even when things are difficult. A tree is scorched by fire and yet new sprouts shoot up, defiant and optimistically reaching toward the sun. A crack in a sidewalk reveals the seeds just beneath the surface, just waiting for a chance to break through. Contemplating this resilient beauty draws us back to our own vitality and the promise that we too are capable of new life. Will you join me in prayer? Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment, bear us up in this time, hold us for eternity. We embrace the brokenness of our lives. We believe you are creating new light that will shine through. We open to your possibilities and all the people say, Amen. for brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in your suffering world, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. For the ravaged earth, oceans and streams, plundered and poisoned, our future, our dreams. Lord, and our madness, carelessness and greed, make us content with the things that we need. God of the poor, friend of the weak, Give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold heart, let tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Lighten our darkness, breathe on this flame. Until your just 
justice burns brightly again until the nations learn of your ways seek your salvation and bring you their praise god of the poor friend of the weak give us compassion we pray melt our cold hearts let tears fall like rain come change our love from a spark to a flame a reading from psalm 145 I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all and your compassion is over all your works. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Caught me just about to have lunch. You know, when I was younger, we had a standard family table grace that we would say when we sat down to eat meals together. Maybe you're familiar with it. It goes like this. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed. But then other times when there was more extended family sitting around the table, there was another prayer that my grandmother or my dad would often offer. And that prayer went like this. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their food in due season. Thou openest thy hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. I love the poetry of that prayer. And it wasn't until years later that I discovered that the words from that prayer actually came right out of scripture. In fact, from the song that we heard today. That table grace was a blessing for the food we were about to receive, but it was even more than that. For as the psalmist rightly says, God's desire is to satisfy us not only with things for our physical sustenance, but also for those things that will sustain us spiritually too. Those gifts that God gives of compassion and kindness, of mercy and steadfast love. One of the ways that we open ourselves to all those things that God desires for us is by awakening ourselves to beauty. Poetry, music, dance, and art, these things are not luxuries, these are necessities for us. Without food, our bodies die. Without beauty, our spirits die. As women strikers in the early 20th century said, we fight for bread, but we fight for roses too.
Mmm, that is good. In the gospel reading for today, that woman who poured out that costly ointment on Jesus' head did a very beautiful thing. It was near the end of his life when Judas had just decided to betray him and Peter will soon deny him. In his hour of greatest need, he can't even count on those who were closest to him to stay by his side. Only this unnamed woman, through her anointing with this fragrant oil, gives Jesus what he truly needs in that moment, an act of service, soothing his tired body and spirit, as well as a show of discipleship, of affirmation, recognition that he indeed was the Messiah, as well as a gesture of encouragement, no doubt giving him strength for what was coming in his suffering and death. And because of that, Jesus says, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Pepper? Okay. When we experience beauty with any of our senses, sight, sound, smells, taste, or touch, our spirits are enlivened. In the last six months, I know for myself that those daily walks I take down by the river or in the foothills have become as important to me as my three meals a day. And when I open myself up to the beauty and reality, I see it everywhere. In ducks floating down the river, in geese flying ahead in their V formation, in the changing colors of the leaves to yellow and orange and red. But you know, even in the worst of places, there is still beauty. Think of the moving spirituals sung by slaves laboring in those cotton fields or the 13-year-old Syrian refugee who writes an award-winning poem, or that grad student who is just one step ahead of food stamps and yet enlivens her small space with prints and shawls and music. The beauty is not in any of these circumstances that they find themselves, but the beauty is in the human spirit that will not be defeated but is empowered by divine goodness. Maybe the desire to make something beautiful, said poet Mary Oliver, is a piece of God that is inside each of us. That peace of God is what gives us resilience and hope in the face of obstacles, and nature itself is proof of that. Forests burn, but then they are replenished. Flowers push their way up through even the smallest of cracks in pavement. Despite the worst of circumstances, the desire for life continues. This past week, our country mourned a national treasure with the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. In her tireless work for equality for all people, born out of the struggles and the obstacles that she faced in her own life, there is beauty found in every argument and brief, even in every dissent that she wrote. Never giving in to anger or other distracting emotions, never defeated in her pursuit of justice, but instead relentlessly using her gifts out of the desire that everyone be treated fairly and be given an opportunity to live their best life. If you want to be a true professional, she said, you will do something outside yourself, something to repair tears in your community, something to make life a little better for people less fortunate than you. That's what I think a meaningful life is, living not for oneself, but for one's community.
Yes, we know that we live in a broken world. We are well aware that God's gift of a harmonious creation for all of us can be diminished. The truth is, we can destroy ecosystems with our toxins. We can create concentration camps. We can perpetuate systems like racism, sexism, classism. We can treat each other very badly. But that is not our deepest truth. When we fall in love with the world, when we fall in love with all that God has made, we open ourselves up to see the beauty that God intends for us, and we are changed. One of my spiritual mentors illustrated that in a wonderful way. People, he said, most people are like electric wires. What comes in is what goes out. Someone calls us a name, we call them a name back. That is, most people pass on the same energy to others that they have taken in themselves. Now compare an electric wire to those big gray transformers that you see sitting on utility poles. Dangerous current or voltage comes in, but something happens in that gray box. What comes out, in fact, is now helpful and productive. That is exactly what Jesus did. He didn't return all that negative energy that was directed at him in his life or as he hung on the cross. He refused to pass it on. Instead, he transformed his suffering into something beautiful. Out of his self-giving love, he gave us new life, empowering us too to be changed and transformed. Here's a spiritual practice for you to consider from Roman Catholic sister Joan Chittister. Try saying this silently to everyone and everything you see in the next 30 days. I wish you happiness now and whatever will bring happiness to you in the future. If we set it to the sky, we would have to stop polluting. If we said it when we see ponds and lakes and streams, we would have to stop using them as garbage dumps and sewers. If we said it to small children, we would have to stop abusing them. If we said it to people, we would have to stop stoking the fires of enmity around us. Beauty and warmth would take root in us like a clear, hot June day we would change. I'm gonna try that practice myself because I know that I need to change. This past week, I became keenly aware of how living in this unprecedented time has taken its toll on me, both emotionally and physically. I felt stressed, tired, impatient, and afraid under the weight of this pandemic, the racial reckoning happening in our country, the upcoming election, and our uncertain future. Maybe you felt some of those things too. Yet I know that these are only distractions from the deeper reality that we know. That is that we are a people with hope and with resilience because we know that our God is with us and that God can bring beauty out of brokenness, that God can transform suffering into new life, and that God will satisfy the desire of every living thing.
Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Guide us as your church, O God, to seek beauty even in the broken places of our world, trusting in your power to bring forth new life. Help us look around with eyes of hope of how we might be instruments of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son took on all of bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged, so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the nations toward life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new spirits. Where sin permeates our cultures and institutions, change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our lives are yours, O God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for healing for Kim Twesme, mother of Lynn Clark, for Shirley Shy and family, grieving the loss of her sister, and for all those on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn this congregation away from our own interests toward the interests of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our community, especially food fellowship, grief support groups, ILC Connects, and our prayer chain. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And as you take your bread, know that this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And as you take your cup, know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Tired and feel you can't get through Uncertainty comes over you Just look around When your problems seem too much to bear Unsure if there's someone who cares Just look around Whether stranger, neighbor, family or friend on each other in tough times we can depend 
Look around, kindness, love is ours to share. We can see it everywhere. Though it might seem like forever, look around, even in the darkest night, things are gonna be alright. We'll get through this together. Just look around. And I'll receive the blessing. The world is so varied and beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found. And may the goodness of the Creator, the companionship of the Christ, and the insight of the Spirit infuse your life now and always. Amen. Share God's gift of love with all. Thanks be to God.